hello and today I don't think you need any introductions to the person I'm speaking to but for those of you that don't know um, I'd like you to introduce you to Reverend George Fisher. Hi, um, would you like Hi, to Bob. introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourself and how you came to faith? How I came to faith? Oh, that's a long, long time ago now. Uh, I was a teenager and uh, in secondary school, I was thoroughly miserable and uh, really didn't enjoy life at all. I can still remember probably around the age of 12, uh, sitting on a step with a friend talking about what the purpose of life was and there was no purpose. Um, so, so really it was like that. We had this dreadful English teacher and she was our form teacher as well, Miss Whitebrook who made everybody's life a misery. Um, but I've got three friends that I hung around with most of the time, every break, every lunchtime, who weren't like that. And occasionally they just disappear off the face of the earth. And uh, I had no idea where they were, where they were going or whatever. And uh, I cottoned on eventually that it was every Tuesday lunchtime. And so I followed them. And they went to something called Christian Union. They hadn't told me about it. They hadn't invited me. Classic. Uh, and so I followed them. And I remember the first time I went in, I literally ran out because it was so intimidating. But they'd got something that I hadn't got. And, and that's what I wanted. And so I went back and uh, got involved in the Christian Union. Uh, we had a, 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 some lovely Christian teachers who were very helpful. And I would say over a period of about three months, I became a Christian, following Jesus, inviting him into my life. Um, but I can't pin a certain specific date. And uh, all I know is that, that that's kind of over that period. What, what sealed it was uh, we went to a Billy Graham uh, rally. Uh, it was a, a live relay, which in those days was cutting edge technology. Uh, in, in Sheffield, this was, which is where I'm from. And, uh, and I went forward at the Billy Graham rally. And, and that was in front of my friends. So that was, if you like, what sealed the deal because it made it very, very public with everybody. So that, that's, that's really how I came to faith. And then um, started going to the church that one of the teachers who ran the Christian Union was involved in and uh, uh, continued to be fully involved in the Christian Union. Um, would you like to tell us a bit about um, your life, um, how it developed from there, your career path and mm. so forth? Yeah, um, I, uh, when, when it came to uh, studying, I decided to uh, do a degree in theology and uh, went to Oak Hill Theological College for that in London. Uh, no intention of being uh, ordained at that point. That wasn't... Uh, in my interest at all. I'd explored it a little bit as a teenager and uh, was thoroughly put off by the diocesan director of ordinance. Um, as well as being part of the church, I belonged to something called the Navigators, uh, who uh, were very, very hot on Bible study and evangelization. And uh, so he asked me about the, the evangelism side of it. And uh, I explained that their uh, principle was principle of multiplication, that if every Christian every year uh, was involved in the conversion of one other person, uh, and then they also in a year were involved in converting someone else, in something like 32 years, uh, the whole world would become Christians. Uh, to which this uh, very uh, uh, rotund, huge elderly, Statesman like DDO said, and do you think it would really be a good idea if everybody were Christians? And at the tender age of 15, that kind of put me off the Church of England, because if that's not what you're about, what are you about? I didn't realise then that the whole point of DDOs was to test and put you off. Anyway, he put me off fairly thoroughly. Uh, and then I went to Oak Hill and uh, studied theology. And uh, I was surrounded by uh, people who uh, were going to be vicars. And that probably put me off more, to be honest. <laughs> and I became a teacher. Uh, I taught religious education and personal and social education. Um, uh, I, I, there was a period in that where I had a crisis of faith and stopped going to church. 
uh, but eventually went back. And uh, within a short time of going back to our home church, actually, because uh, in that time I'd got married to Joan as well, uh, I was sent in a call to ordination. And uh, so then uh, that's where I went off. Uh, I did non-residential training because I'd already done a degree at a theological college and I thought that was enough. And they agreed, thankfully. And so it was the non-residential training while I was still teaching. Uh, I had every intention of being a headmaster. Uh, that's what I really wanted to do and run a school how it should be run and do things like abolish homework. And uh, yeah, so I had quite radical ideas. Um, but anyway, uh, God had other ideas. And uh, so I followed his path. And uh, I was ordained uh, uh, just in my early 30s, went off, became a curate in a place called Cunisborough, which is uh, in between Rotherham and Doncaster. Uh, and uh, was there for eight years because there we saw some uh, utterly astounding things happen. Uh, it was a mining village and the mine uh, got closed by Maggie Thatcher and into the, the desperation of that situation. Uh, there was a, a really good live evangelical church that I was curious at and uh, the Holy Spirit just came and touched people's lives and the church grew to 500. And it was the most amazing experience, seeing uh, loads of people come to faith and then and, and seeing God healing people in radical ways. Uh, and then after eight years there, uh, it was time to move on. And uh, that's at uh, St. T's. And uh, I was speaker there for 15 years. And uh, that's some absolutely fabulous times. And uh, it was a very special time and uh, thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, after which, after being there 15 years, uh, I went then to uh, uh, Leachfield Diocese to become director of mission. And then uh, was there 12 years and retired last year. Oh. And then here I am now, and living in Eastbourne on the south coast. Are you enjoying it at Eastbourne? Uh, yes, it's lovely, thank you. We, we can move down here to be near our daughter and uh, grandchildren, because oh. they live down the centre of the country. Oh, well, I know there's well, a lot of people. Them would have stayed up north otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of people up north. I've got a lot to thank you for. I know that from St. Thomas's. You're held very dear in a lot of people's hearts. Uh, my next question Can you show us your Bible and tell us a bit about your daily spiritual practices? Right. The, the Bible I'm currently using is, is this one. And. Uh, uh, I love it because it's nice and bendable. I like it. Um, and, but unfortunately, I don't know if you can see that, it is actually too bendable and it is falling apart. And uh, so the other Bible I use, which I've not brought up with me, uh, is actually uh, the Bibles we were given when we left St. Uh, which is almost identical to this, but blue, uh, but it's in much better condition. So uh, it is time actually to, to put this one away and not use the other one purely for best, which is what I have been doing, uh, but to use it uh, more regularly. Of course, as always these days, uh, the Bible is also there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So uh, often I'm, yeah, I've got a Bible in my pocket there. So that's, that's also it. Uh, daily practices, um, at the moment with the uh, coronavirus and the lockdown, uh, our church here in Eastbourne is doing morning prayer by Zoom. And uh, it's, it's about a 15, 20 minute journey uh, by car to the church. So we wouldn't go to morning prayer normally. Uh, but with it being on Zoom, we uh, do Zoom morning prayer every day. Uh, and that's a really good start to the day. Uh, really kind of sets in a, a good pattern for the day. And it's a bit of fellowship as well with other Christians over the internet. Uh, then I normally have just a bit of time uh, in private prayer. Uh, sometimes that'll come before morning prayer, sometimes after. Um, I also uh, have always memorized Bible verses right from when I first became a Christian. Part of the follow-up from Billy Graham uh, was uh, teaching you to memorize key verses in the Bible. And I still do that. So I review my uh, Bible verses uh, every morning and every evening as well. Uh, and then sometime in the evening, uh, Joan and I will do uh, a time of prayer together. And we normally use the Northumbrian uh, rite of Compline. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we use that and then we, we pray for individuals that we know and situations that we know uh, that need our prayer at the moment. So that, that's, that's the normal daily pattern that, uh, that I fit into. Do you have any tips on helping memorise Bible verses? Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I use, uh, in, in those days, it was called the topical memory system. And, and because there was an actual system to it, uh, it worked very, very well. Uh, now, uh, I use uh, something again on the phone. Um, and it's just a Bible memory app. And uh, that helps you to actually do the, the review of the verses. And uh, it has devices for helping you to memorize them. So uh, very, very simple. Uh, to use that. The, the key always to memorising Bible verses is to review them. Yeah. Uh, so you can learn it, but by the next day you've forgotten it normally. But if you keep reviewing it, then uh, you're okay. And uh, as you get to know the verse better, you review it less and less. Yeah, yeah but you still review it. So the, the verse is there on my system there. I'm still reviewing every month even if I learned them 45 years ago or longer. Do you have so a preferred um, translation of the Bible that you um, like to read, or do you dip into different translations? I'll dip into different ones, but the main one I use is na uh, New International Version. Uh, that I just find that standard. It's, it's, it's fairly clear, reasonably accurate, um, and a lot of people use it, so you're not kind of at odds with everybody else. Um, speaking of Bible verses, what Bible verse or passage um, has has spoken to you or is speaking to you most at the moment? Uh, one that I find uh, I've used a lot and, uh, and I currently do with the present crisis uh, is uh, Psalm 46, which says God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. And uh, it, it talks about God's presence with us. Um, but isn't afraid to talk about the problems as well and to acknowledge that uh, we do go through difficult times. And it has a lovely verse in it, be still and know that I am God. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a lovely passage. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's relatively short, 11 verses, uh, but there's a huge amount in it. And so I will often uh, use that for myself. Uh, but also quote it for others as well. Brilliant. Um, how do you pray and draw closer to God? Um, I, I find that the uh, the pattern of prayer is crucial for me, uh, that I actually have time as, that are devoted to prayer. Um, I think, yeah, some people find prayer very, very natural and very easy. I don't. Um, it, it, it's always been a struggle for me. Shouldn't say that as a vicar, shouldn't you, probably? But, no, but <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but really, uh, uh, I think some people have a gift uh, and a calling to intercession. And, uh, and, and that, that is just naturally part of them. Uh, many of us do struggle. And, uh, and and so uh, to have those set times that remind me of God's presence and draw me into God's presence are crucial. Um, I, I think we live in a very busy world normally. I mean, I'm now retired and there's lockdown, so it's a very strange world. Um, but in the busyness of life, we can lose uh, that sense of God's presence with us. And, and so it's important just have those moments to step aside um, and to be reminded that God is there and that we belong to him. Uh, and, and within that, it's the verse I quoted earlier, be still and know that I am God. And it's that uh, just calming down, stepping aside. Um, I think the other thing is uh, sometimes nature as well can, can draw us to God. Um, uh, I have a lot of interest in photography, and that's one of my key hobbies. And and that looking at nature helps you just to again slow down, and and focus on what is there, 
rather than rushing past just to get to where you're going. Uh, in fact, I will always remember when I was a vicar in Blackpool and um, I was going to a meeting down in Lytham St. Anne's with some fellow uh, church leaders. And as always, I was last minute. And I was diving down Park Road uh, as fast as the speed limit allowed, just. And uh, there on the left was one of our uh, gentlemen of the road. Um, and he was ambling along and stopped at this hedge where there were roses and was just sniffing and smelling the roses. And there was I charging down Park Road to the next meeting, coming straight from something else, thinking, who was the fool here? Because there was he, slowing down to appreciate the beauty of God's creation and to smell the roses. And I have to try and make myself do that sometimes and then just recognise God's presence within that. Yeah, but it's not easy sometimes. I'm so glad you said that because... We I get preoccupied with this. I was going to ask you about um, your photography because I... I from your Facebook, you can see you're a keen photographer um, Photographer, and um, whether that drew you close to being with God's creation. So thank you for sharing that. Hmm. Yeah, I, again, uh, you've got to make sure you get the right perspective because if you're not careful, you can be so tied up in the technicalities of taking the photo, you don't actually look at the creation or think about the creator. So it, it's always just getting that right mindset of God's presence. Um, and my last question, <laughs> apart from the Bible, you can't use the Bible. And um, is there one book that you would say has been really influential for you in your walk of faith? Uh, I, I think, yes, I would, I would go back to that era that I mentioned uh, in Cunisborough, uh, where the Holy Spirit really came in power. And uh, a key influence within that was the teaching of a, a man called John Wimber, who was an American preacher. And uh, uh, he uh, wrote various books. One of them is, uh, is Power Healing. And, uh, and, and that and other books in a similar sort of... There was a David Pitcher's one, Come Holy Spirit. So I've got three books now. Um, but, but uh, just all in that era about uh, really talking about the Holy Spirit coming and inviting the Holy Spirit to, to be very much part of our lives personally and our corporate life as the church. But then not just for our gratification, but in order to take the love of God out to others. Uh, and some of the most powerful healings I've ever seen have been on the fringes of the church uh, touching those on the outside to draw them in, not necessarily in the church itself. Yeah. And, uh, and then all of that uh, reading was very, very new and fresh at the time. Uh, and a really important emphasis that, that transformed my thinking about life and ministry and, and what the church is there for. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah, Power Evangelism, Power Healing, those, those sorts of books by John Wimber. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sure people would really be um, encouraged by what you've got, you've had to say today and it will help them. Um, would, you, would you like to pray for us? Certainly will, yeah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are indeed our refuge and an ever-present help in trouble. Uh, thank you for all my memories of uh, all the churches I've been in, and uh, especially Sentees. And uh, thank you for the, the relationships, the friendships, the love, all that was shared in the era I was there and since. And Lord, I ask for your continued blessing on all our lives that we might indeed in this time of uh, uh, strange lockdown and uh, emerging from that, uh, as individuals and as your church, know your hand and your presence upon us. And that you would use us in this time to go deeper into your love, but to go wider into the world and the community in which you've set us, 
that people may truly know that there is a God who loves them and who cares for them. So take us and use us, we pray, to the glory of Jesus, in the power of his spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, George. That was so oh, thank you. I'm sure people will be so pleased to hear from you. Great. And uh, every blessing to all of you. We have very, very fond memories. <laughs>